Hello everyone. Um, to start off this conversation about community and collaboration, I actually want to take us to the trees. Who likes going for a walk in the forest or the woods? Yeah, it's pretty much everyone. And it, I think it doesn't matter if you have kids or a dog or you want to do forest bathing all by yourself. Um, I imagine that most of us will think of the good smell, the fresh air, the peace and quiet. In summer, it's nice and cool. In winter, it's nice and romantic. But I don't think that many people, and correct me if I'm wrong, have thought about what's actually going on in the forest that we can't see, that we can't hear, and that we might not even know about. Because all of those trees, they actually form communities. For example, fir and beech trees, they communicate through their root systems. And what they do is, because of course you have trees of different sizes and heights, and some trees are more in the shade, others get a lot of sun, some need more carbon and others have too much carbon. They have more than they need. So what happens is that the ones that have too much send it through the roots to the ones that need more. I think we humans can probably learn a little bit from them. So what they do is they share the resources based on what is required. And then in that forest you have mushrooms. And you might think, mm, mushroom pizza, maybe creamy sauce with mushrooms on some pasta. But the mushrooms are also an essential part of this communication network. And they have extremely long roots going down into this existing root network of the trees. And they help communicate and connect, but they also contribute their own nutrients into this network. <coughs> and it just kind of blows my mind. I think it's super fascinating what's going on. And there are hub trees or mother trees that also nurture the other trees. So I've mentioned if you are a smaller tree and you don't have enough carbon, you'll get some from the bigger trees that have plenty of carbon. But the mother trees, they also pass on their defense system. So they get attacked from, I guess, bacteria and, and all sorts of other things. And the way they defend themselves is something they learn and that they store as intelligence and they pass it on to these younger trees so that they have a better immune and defense system. And this is what the data looks like when you map out a network of trees. So these are actually trees, um, and the hub trees the, are the big dark green circles. And then you've got the seedlings, so the really small young trees, and you've got the mushrooms, and all the root connections between them all. And I think this is probably a really good segue into the data topic, because this looks much, much more like the data stuff we've been talking about. A quick introduction to who I am. Steve has already mentioned it. So I'm the evangelist um, at Snowflake here for the EMEA region. My name is Eva Murray. And I want to tell you a little bit of how I've been involved in communities and why I love talking about it. The first one is Makeover Monday. And I do want to gauge, has anyone heard of Makeover Monday? OK, a couple of people, great. So this is a project for the data visualization community. And I've been involved with a little break in between for, well, five or so years. And um, in this project, what we do, so I run this with my partner, and he's mainly doing it now. And I'm just kind of chipping in on the side. And the, what we do is every week, he finds a visualization out there. And I know Tim mentioned earlier, he has this collection of bad visualizations. The internet is full of them. So he finds a bad visualization, and he finds the data that was used to, to create this visualization, because most people do quote their sources. And then he shares it and makes it available to a wider community. And with the encouragement that anyone who wants to work with this data set and build their skills as, an, and as analysts um, should create a better visualization. So you've got the bad example to start with, the before, and then you've got to make it over. So this happens once a week. And it's a really nice, thriving community. And it's really fun, because for us, initially, it was a way to at the time, practice Tableau, pre keep our own skills sharp, and get other people to do the same for them. And over time, what we noticed is, well, we're not just helping them build their skills. We're helping them build a portfolio. So people create, in theory, 52 visualizations a year. And if this is what they also do as part of their job, that's a really nice way to supplement their CV. It also helped them do other stuff, like then find a new job, learn from others and be inspired, see sometimes not just dozens, but hundreds of different ways to visualize the same data set, and also connect with others. And we did things like support charities in their work with data so that they would have access to hundreds of analysts to look at their own data. 
Another thing, and you can probably guess that I kind of like trees, is the Maple Square. It's a platform that I founded because I said, we need more women on stage. And um, what I did was I set up a website and I said, who are the women who want to speak at events in data and tech and who might just not be known? It could be any level. It could be speaking at a user group. It could be speaking in a keynote. It could be senior executives. It could be people just starting out. But how can we get rid of this argument of where are the women? We just can't find them. So I said at the Maple Square is a community where companies can find women who are keen to speak on data and tech topics, be it data science, visualization, or anything else. And all of this runs really well, actually, through social media. Now, there's plenty of downsides to social media. We all know that. But it is, again, a way to connect everyone really easily because the tools are free. You can use them even if you're not registered quite a lot of the time. And it's a nice way to then bring new people in and to make connections between them and help them meet other people, etc. So people love communities. And I've got some quotes up there. And while I'm talking, you're welcome to read those. Um, they are from a kind of tech environment and ecosystem. And what happens in communities is not everyone wants to lead. Some people just want to participate. And that's perfectly fine. They're more than welcome to. But everyone benefits from having that sense of belonging and being part of a group. We've all enjoyed coming here today because we're tired of just doing things over Zoom and Teams. We want to meet people in person. We want to meet people we haven't seen for a while and reconnect with them. And communities give people a chance to contribute in many different ways that go beyond what they do in their day jobs. So things like creating content in different formats and sharing that with a wider group, answering questions, Online forums for tech companies are a great example. You ask a question, and suddenly there's all these people falling over themselves to help you. And in response, you might have to then clarify your question, because maybe they gave you great answers that were answering your question, but you realized that was not really the question you had in the first place. Some people really enjoy welcoming new people into a community and being those you know, kind of welcomers at the door. Others want to mentor other people or even create solutions that they're willing to share. Now, communities have a bunch of stuff to offer. And it's not just for the individuals that participate, but also for you as employers, as um, corporations or, or companies, and for us as a whole industry as well. There is inspiration, there's help, ideas, there's suggestions and support. And I say that that's a start starting point. That's where people can get started to kind of get, get into it. Communities are an opportunity for people to teach each other. And I <laughs> never thought I would have an interest in teaching because when I left school, I was like, I never want to set foot in a school environment again. And I didn't really think that I could be teaching in a different context. And I actually ended up being a certified teacher <coughs> for Tableau. And I really enjoyed it. And in this Make a Monday project, what my role is that every week on a Wednesday, 6 o'clock UK time, I do a live stream for half an hour on YouTube, and I give people feedback on their visualizations. And I really liked taking what they've created and just pointing out, have you thought about this? Have you considered you know, changing the colors a little bit? This is what I notice as an outsider looking at your work. And I do that, of course, in a constructive way. I'm not there to just kind of rip <laughs> people apart. It's really about helping them improve their work by looking at a number of different uh, pieces of work and giving people feedback they can incorporate next time. There's also a chance to make a greater contribution. And I briefly mentioned it just before. So when people have a job, a data job, there is only so many tasks they can do in a day. But maybe there's something missing. And the community gives them that opportunity to make that additional contribution or to maybe find something where that they hadn't really considered could be enjoyable for them. And finally, I think those teachers and leaders naturally emerge in a community. If you put people into a room and you give them a task to solve or a problem to solve, people will take on roles kind of naturally. And there will be leaders, there will be presenters, there will be the ones looking at the technical uh, challenge and figuring out what to do about that. And there will be somebody who coordinates everyone. And I think it's a really nice way for some people to recognize that they are leaders, even if they are not managers or recognized with a title. So how do you actually do that? And 
yes, we're still in a keynote environment, but I think in the sense of you know, the practical suggestions that have come before me, I also want to bring some um, pragmatic steps. And I always recommend doing five things. The first is figuring out where you are today. So what's going on in your organization? What are you doing today when it comes to not just the data and the processes, but also the people and how they work together? How do they solve problems? How do they talk to each other? How do they collaborate? We've seen mention of Slack and other tools. So what is the way that they're working together? And then figuring out what do you actually want to do? Where do you want to be tomorrow in a year, in three years? And, and also then identifying what the gap is. So what is currently standing between you and that, that vision? Is it not having enough people? Is it not having the right tech? Whatever it might be, but just being very honest. And it doesn't have to be a super detailed program level analysis with everything spelled out. It could be everything on a page, but just being very honest and saying, yep, this is where we are today. And then finding community champions. And I actually think that's easier than most people expect because they typically self-select. This often starts as additional work or seemingly additional work. So the people who put up their hand for it, they're probably the best choice initially to, to use as those champions who will help you distribute these ideas, get people on board and make things happen. And then coming up with some specific activities. And this is, for me, the most fun part. And this is thinking about things like Makeover Monday or many other types of things that <clears throat> you can introduce in your organization to upskill people, to connect people, to um, destroy the data silos, to build some efficiencies. And these activities, of course, depend on what you want to achieve. If your main goal is to increase data literacy, and to build people's skills, then the activities should focus on how can we teach people about data? How can we make sure they have these fundamental skills? And maybe it is existing experts teach new, new joiners or teach people who are coming from the business with minimal data skills. But it really depends on that. And those activities can have very different formats. They could be a weekly meetup, they could be office hours, a hackathon, maybe an internal conference or showcase. There's a lot of opportunities there, um, but these are the five steps I would follow. And of course, there's always lessons learned. So I've done this community stuff for a few years now, and I've done a bunch of things wrong. So I thought in the uh, interest of uh, transparency, I'll also talk about those. The first one is to start small. I overcommitted in the beginning, and I wanted to help everyone. I even had a tablet, and I would take their visualizations. I would take a screenshot. I would scribble on it, upload it to Twitter, and share it with them, and this for every individual person. And it was just way too much work, because I also still had a day job that I had to get done and a life to live. And what I've learned from that is the smallest step you can take, that's the best thing to start with, and not committing to anything beyond this one small thing. So, for example, having that weekly office hours where maybe one expert you know, it could be your internal elation expert says, you can talk to me in the next hour, you can Slack me, you can come by my desk, and I will answer your questions. And that's the only commitment you make. And then learning from that and figuring out what works and what doesn't. The other lesson learned is showing results early, quickly, uh, even if they're quite small, but showing something so that you can get more support and more buy-in for this idea of connecting more people, of building that community and driving that collaboration and sharing the work that people do. On the one hand, people really like most of the time when their work is shared, when somebody highlights what they've accomplished, but also it inspires others that you may not have thought of, that you might not have reached yet to say, oh, actually, I want, I want to be part of this. I want to do some of this stuff. Um, and then having some KPIs and or OKRs, depending on how you rule, um, and, and make this work part of people's actual day job and making those contributions count. So not just saying, oh, you know, can you run this community like in addition to all the 40 hours plus you're already doing? No, there has to be time and space for people to do this as part of their job, but also there should be some sort of reward. And one thing I did early in my career, so I started after university, I joined Deloitte, and we had monthly meetups for all of the consultants to come home home to the office and, uh, and to actually learn and hear about use cases and customers and all that kind of stuff. And for all of us analysts and junior consultants, there was always a learning element. 
And it was your job, I think once a quarter, to prepare a short uh, presentation about something you wanted to teach the others. And that was part of the, of the, um, the annual goals. You know, it's just fixed in there. You have to do so and so many of these sessions a year. And I, I think because it is something you can do and be quite specific about and really say, well, this is what you will deliver as part of this community. Um, it's one of those measurable items you can put in someone's plan. So um, a good idea to have specific goals around that. So to conclude this presentation, I want to also share a couple of stories of inspiration from the community, things that people have achieved, things that they take away from being members of a community. And I truly believe they can change people's lives. I've <coughs> met and worked with a woman who has now become a friend, who through this Makeover Monday community, she built a portfolio. At the time she lived in Pakistan, and she was discovered on LinkedIn by an organization in Switzerland, and they wanted to hire her. So she moved to the other side of the world and started a completely new life, and she loves living in Europe. And it was all possible, not because of us, but because she participated in this community that helped her build a portfolio that she could then be discovered for her skills, which she can now apply in a job that she never thought she would have. It's things like getting more confident because people do these, you know, do these projects or participate, connect with others. Um, it's learning a new tool for somebody who joins an organization. It's maybe getting a promotion and people enjoying their work again. Because data job, let's be honest, data jobs can sometimes be a bit solitary. And this is a chance to form connections, even, whether it's virtual or in person, but just to talk with like-minded people about the stuff they enjoy and how can we make this better in our organization. It's also about changing career paths and not just about leaving and finding a new job, but carving out something new for people where they discover actually they quite like public speaking <laughs> or maybe they actually really enjoy teaching other people in the organization. We can take really valuable stuff from that and develop people's skills and interests into a direction that also really benefits the company. And then feeling excited about work again, because in addition to the day job, there is this other stuff waiting for them to do and these other people to connect with. And when they learn something new, maybe they also meet new people. And how often has it happened that people connect within an organization and realize we've been working on the same type of project on the same data sets for years and we didn't know about each other. Maybe if we work together rather than doubling up the work we're doing, we could work together and come up with all these new questions to answer and all these new solutions to those questions. And all of you can play a key role in this, depending on you know, your position in an organization, but no matter what that position is, you can empower the people in your companies to get involved, to collaborate more, to build those communities. And you can help make those communities a reality by supporting it as managers, as leaders, and recognizing the return on the investment it can make for your organization. What can you actually get out of that as well? Because there will always be people who want to see some hard numbers, and you can create them, I'm really confident. Then building some KPIs and measuring them, and finally, giving people ownership of their data community, having those data champions embrace their new role and that opportunity and going with it because I am confident they will surprise you with some of their ideas and the stuff they, came up, they come up with. Maybe just as much as I was surprised to learn about how trees communicate when they're just standing there, you know, being all still and green um, and suddenly they're talking through their roots. So I want to invite you to take some of these ideas Maybe think about it a little bit, but also connect with me if you have any questions following this, and, um, and I'm more than happy to continue the conversation. Thank you very much. <laughs>